How's it going, everyone? Let's practice some nomenclature. So in this first example, we're going to want to start by counting the amount of carbons in the parent chain. It's just a habit you want to get into every single time you do questions like this. So we're going to see we have five total carbons in our parent chain. If we were to count a couple other directions, maybe from here, you're going to see that we have the same amount of carbons, and five is going to be the most amount. So we know for sure we're going to have a methyl group on either our carbon number two or carbon number four kind of depends on which way you're counting from, but which one do we choose? So we know that because of our nomenclature rules, we're going to want to put the substituent on the lowest numbered carbon, which means we're going to count our parent chain in the green direction. So when we name this, we're going to call it 2-methyl pentane. 2-methyl because our methyl group is on carbon number 2, and pentane because that's the name of our parent chain. So let's try the next, next example. So we're going to start off by counting the carbons again, and you'll see we have five carbons. If we count maybe you know a different direction, let's try one, two, three, four, five. It's always going to be five. That's going to be our longest parent chain. And in this example, it looks like we're going to have substituents on carbon number 2 and carbon number 3. And we're going to use 2 and 3 in the green direction because that's going to put our substituents on the lowest numbers. If we had come from the other direction, maybe the blue direction, we would have them on carbons number 3 and 4, which are not the lowest numbers we can assign them to. So in this example, we're going to call it 2,3-dimethyl, di being 2, dimethyl, go over to the next the next line, pentane. 2,3-dimethyl pentane. Alright, let's go to a couple harder ones. So, again, we're always going to start by counting our parent chain. In this example, we could kind of count it a couple different ways. Let's try 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then maybe if we count Maybe starting one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we still have five that way. So we definitely know we're going to have pentane again. But which way are we going to count from? Well, if we count from the green direction, we have a substituent on carbon number three. If we count from the blue direction, we also have it on number three. So in this case, it actually doesn't really matter which one we use. We could either use this as the substituent, or we can use this one. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. So, how, wh what's the name of this group? Well, let's count the carbons. We have one and two. So it has two carbons, which gives us ethyl. So when we name this, we're going to call it 3-ethyl, three, three ethyl, three ethyl pentane. All right, let's go to a harder example. So this one's a little bit wonky, but let's start off by just doing what we know and counting our parent chain. So if we go this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, we have six in this chain. Maybe, maybe let's try going up. So it's one, two, three again, four, but then let's go up, five. And we have more carbons to the right, so we'll count up to the right, six, seven. So it looks like seven's going to be our parent chain. And then if we were to stick to that chain, we're going to have three substituents. We're going to have one here, one there, and one here. So let's kind of write this in an organized fashion. So we know we have heptane, right? We have heptane as our parent chain. And we have, we have two methyl groups, and it's either going to be on three on the green and five on the green, or it could be, if we counted the opposite way, it would be the exact same thing. If we were to count from top to bottom, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So either way, we're going to have methyls on three and five. So let's just go ahead and write, let's go ahead and write three, three, five, dimethyl. And then our last substituent is going to be an ethyl group on 4, 4 ethyl. And we know it's ethyl because it has 1, 2 carbons. So how are we going to name this? Well, 
we're going to put it in an order where we have alphabetical order being between the ethyl and the methyl. We want the letter closest to the beginning of the alphabet in front. Normally we follow the rule where we want our lowest numbers in front, but when you have multiple substituents, you're going to want to put them in alphabetical order, especially in this case where the 4 is kind of four is kind of right between the 3 and the 5. So when we go ahead and name this, we're going to start with 4-ethyl, four 4-ethyl, four 3-5-dimethyl, heptane. So the di doesn't count in, as, as far as alphabetical order. When you, when you do alphabetical order, you don't include these prefixes like di, tri, or any of those ones. You're going to mainly look at the beginning of the substituent name, which is the E and the M in ethyl and methyl. All right, let's go to our last two examples. These are very similar, but there's going to be one difference between them. So let's start off by doing what we know. We're going to count the longest carbon chain. So let's try one two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So in that direction it's eight, but maybe maybe we can try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's actually gonna be the same in both directions. And if we were to count the other way from right to left, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna have eight no matter what. Eight is gonna be our parent chain. Our parent chain is gonna be octane. So what is the name of this gonna be? Well, if we choose any of, any of the substituents, and it could be pretty much any of these two, because it doesn't really matter what way we count as far as you know the blue or the yellow directions, we're, we're gonna notice we have a propyl group. We know it's propyl because we have, we're gonna have one, two, three carbons. I'm just kind of choosing the yellow direction or the uh, the blue direction, but you could you you could go in the opposite direction as well. And in both directions, we're gonna have the parent chain on carbon number four. I know this is getting a little bit messy here, but it's gonna be on carbon number four. So when we go ahead and name this, we're gonna have four propyl octane. Four propyl octane. Now let's do our last example of the video. Always starting out by counting our parent chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But let's just make sure that there's no other directions we can count from. Maybe we can start from the bottom here. You know, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's not going to be the green. It's blue's definitely longer. But just in case, maybe we could try. Try one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's also smaller than the blue chain. So we're gonna we're gonna go with the the eight carbons of our parent chain. So it's gonna be octane again. But which what's the name of our substituent? Because we, we have a three carbon substituent. We have one carbon, two, and three. So normally we know that to be propyl, but this is a branched propyl. And as you can see, these two carbons, this uh this carbon right here and this carbon right here, they're kind of kind of isolated. That's kind of where the, the branches are. Branches off from this carbon right here and creates this branched propyl group. And we're gonna call that isopropyl. So our substituents can be on carbon number four, four iso, four isopropyl, and then it's going to be octane. Four isopropyl octane. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in nomenclature number three.